In today's video, we're going to briefly go over some of the details about the brain. The next few videos in this series will talk about other subtopics associated with the brain like development, the blood-brain barrier and cerebrospinal fluid. I'd also like to talk about the cranial nerves at some point too, so subscribe so you get notifications when I release those videos. A lot of people assume when talking about the brain, they assume it's just this region here, which is called the cerebrum. But there's actually four major parts to the brain, and in this video, I don't want to go into too much detail about each component, I just want you to understand firstly what the components are and some of their basic functions. We have the brain stem, the cerebellum, the diencephalon and the cerebrum. The brainstem is kind of a continuation of the spinal cord, and in the brainstem we have the medulla oblongata, the pons and the midbrain. The medulla oblongata is responsible for regulating several basic functions of the autonomic nervous system, and that includes respiration, cardiac function, vasodilation and certain reflexes like vomiting and coughing. The pons is this region here, and it's like a bridge between the cerebellum and the cerebrum. And the pons is in fact where four cranial nerves originate. Those cranial nerves are the trigeminal nerve, the abducens nerve, the facial nerve and the vestibulocochlear nerve. And then the final part to the brainstem is the midbrain and this is the most superior portion of the brainstem and it's divided into two parts, the tectum and the paired cerebral peduncles. Behind the brainstem is the cerebellum. Now the cerebellum which is actually Latin for the little brain, is a major structure of the hindbrain that is located near the brain stem. This part of the brain is responsible for coordinating voluntary movements and it's also responsible for, for various functions like balance, coordination and posture. The diencephalon is another component of the brain and, and it's mostly hidden from the view when you're looking kind of from an outside view. Uh, you can divide the diencephalon into four parts. We have the epithalamus, the thalamus, the subthalamus, and the hypothalamus. And it's hard to describe the exact function of the diencephalon because of these four substructures, but they all have different functions. I'll touch on it very briefly now, but a separate video will be made to cover this in more detail. The epithalamus of the diencephalon contains the pineal gland, which releases melatonin to help with circadian rhythm or your sleeping pattern. The subthalamus contains nuclei and grey matter like the zona inserta, reticular nucleus and the perigoniculate nucleus. The thalamus has numerous functions including relaying sensory information and the hypothalamus acts to maintain homeostasis, ensuring that things like body temperature and, and blood acidity is kept within a certain range. It does so by regulating the release of certain hormones. Finally, we have the cerebrum, which is also known as the telencephalon, and this is the largest part of the brain and contains the cerebral cortex. The cerebrum consists of left and right hemispheres, which are joined together by a structure called corpus callosum. The main functions of the cerebrum include initiation of movement, coordination, temperature, touch, vision, hearing, problem solving, emotions and learning. And that's just to name a few. The cerebral cortex is further classified into four lobes and they include the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe and the occipital lobe. I'll be making some more videos on the brain and I'll be breaking down each of these structures so make sure you subscribe and keep a lookout for those videos to come. 